and welcome everyone to today's webinar, Best Practices for Receiving Produce in the USDA DOD FRESH Program. My name is Sam Hunley, and I am today's moderator. Before we dive in, I want to point out a couple of features of the webinar environment. Uh, first and foremost, if you have a question today, please enter it into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. It's the box labeled Type Your Questions Here. Uh, we won't be taking questions over the phone, uh, but we'll do our best to get, all the question, get to all the questions in today's presentation. You are always welcome uh, to follow up with us via email. Also, to your right, you should see a couple of files that you can download, including a copy of today's slides, as well as a completion certificate documenting your attendance today. All right, with that, let's get started. Presenting today from the Program Integrity and Monitoring Branch will be Blair tucker Grutala and Kathleen Staley. Blair is leading us off today, so take it away, Blair. Thanks, Sam. Through the United States Department of Agriculture, Department of Defense, Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program, known as the USDA DOD Fresh Program, the USDA is able to offer a wide variety of fresh produce than would normally be available through USDA purchases to Indian tribal organizations and state agencies participating in the food distribution program on Indian reservations. This webinar will discuss the best practices for receiving fresh fruits and vegetables through the USDA DOD FRESH program. The topics that will be covered in this webinar are defining the stakeholders' roles and responsibilities, how to receive and check produce upon delivery, and how to report complaints in the USDA DOD FRESH program. Lastly, we'll provide a list of resources and contacts. Having a successful USDA DOD FRESH program rests primarily on the efforts and accountability of various stakeholders, which we have listed on the slides above. In the following slides, we've outlined the particular functions performed by these stakeholders associated with the USDA DOD FRESH program. By defining the roles and responsibilities, we hope to improve overall stakeholder communication and to clarify expectations. The USDA administers the USDA DOD FRESH program. Responsibilities include providing DLA with a listing of participating ITOs and working with DLA to add new ITOs interested in utilizing the USDA DOD FRESH program as part of their monthly food package benefit. The USDA, both FNS headquarters and the FNS regional offices, also ensure ITOs follow established policies and procedures. The FNS regional offices monitor usage information and local program operations. The FNS technology branch maintains the FAVORS system application and the USDA pays for the DOD for produce purchases. When ITOs submit complaints to the USDA, either due to recurring quality issues or vendor performance issues, the USDA works with DOD to ensure the vendor is in compliance with the terms of the contract. Our partners at DLA manage the procurement contracts with produce vendors. DLA posts the solicitation evaluates the responses and awards the contracts. They also monitor the contracts to ensure the vendors are complying with contract terms. When there are vendor performance issues, the DOD takes action to ensure the vendor is in accordance with the standards set forth in the contract. When ITOs submit complaints to DLA for quality issues or vendor performance issues, DLA works with the vendor and the USDA to resolve the complaint. Lastly, DLA conducts produce quality audits on vendors to ensure customers are receiving safe produce, adherence to food safety and food defense requirements, and compliance with produce quality standards and product availability.
The vendor's responsibilities include uploading a weekly catalog of U.S. grown fruits and vegetables, including the state of origin and pricing information that is firm at the time of order. Vendors should communicate regularly with customers to ensure satisfaction with vendor service and to address any concerns. When complaints arise, the vendor works with the DLA and the ITO to ensure the complaint is resolved quickly. In the event of a recall, the vendor must promptly notify their customers. ITOs and state agencies are responsible for placing orders and favors for the correct delivery days. We cannot stress enough that ITOs must inspect the produce at the time of delivery and document on the delivery sheet any shortages or rejected items for poor quality. In addition to documenting the issues on the delivery sheet, the ITO should contact their DLA service representative and the vendor within one business day about quality condition or delivery issues. Quantity discrepancies should be noted prior to acceptance and recorded on the signed delivery sheet. Complaints should be reported to the vendor, DLA service representative, and the FNS regional office. If issues persist, we recommend the ITO contact the USDA Foods Complaint Team. Lastly, ITOs must go into favors and accurately receipt within five days from delivery so the vendor can be paid. Now on to the truck is arriving and you are about to receive your produce. At the time of delivery and before the truck leaves, ITOs should first Check each order to make sure all produce received is domestically grown and reject all produce that is not grown in the U.S. Secondly, verify the quantity received against your favors order sheet, not the vendor's shipping document. Confirm that the quantity of the product ordered and received matches the quantity on the delivery document. Carefully count the product before the vendor leaves. Note any shortages or overages on the signed delivery document prior to acceptance. Thirdly, we want you to examine the quality of the produce. Inspect for defects. Open cartons to check produce quality and condition effect, defects. Condition defects are issues that will worsen over time. Examples of condition defects are bruising, sunken discolored areas, shriveling, surface discoloration, and decay. Randomly check product from each layer on the pallet, not just the top layer cartons. Any produce boxes that appear damaged should be checked carefully. And lastly, document any issues on the delivery document prior to acceptance and signature take plenty of photos, and make copies of this documentation to maintain for your record. And now we will go to our first polling question. If there is an issue with some of the produce delivered, how do you handle it? A, if the product cannot be distributed, communicate with the driver that is that product is refused and have it put back on the truck, ask the driver for product to be replaced. B, keep the product and call the vendor the next day and ask for product to be replaced. C, take no action. D, only report if there is a problem with the same product on the next delivery. And we have most votes going to A, which is correct. If the product cannot be distributed, communicate with the driver that the product is refused and have it put back on the truck and ask the driver for, product, for the product to be replaced. 
And now I will turn it over to Kathy, who will go into how to check your produce. Thanks, Blair, and welcome, everyone. <clears throat> We're excited to, to share some information and best practices to help you check the quality of product um, as it's delivered. Blair shared some tips about um, that the DOD um, contract requirement is that the vendor deliver U.S. number one or better product. And what does that mean? Well, the USDA develops grade standards, which create a common language <clears throat> that everyone in the industry understands. So if I um, order lettuce from California and it comes to Virginia and I say that there is an issue with decay and, and russet spotting and bruising, um, we're talking the same language. So today we're going to get a little deeper into U.S. number one or better. U.S. number one allows 10% total defects, no more than 2% decay. Well, what does that mean? And Blair also used some terms quality and condition. So <clears throat> decay, that is a condition defect. That is a defect that progresses as the product ages. Blair also mentioned bruises, internal discoloration, sunken discolored areas. And we will spend some more time talking about those today. Misshapen, these are um, a quality defect. These are defects that do not change. As you notice, this, um, the photos are of um, an apple, and that is how the apple grew on the tree. The shape of that apple is not going to change over time, or the potato, or the, the knobby-nosed um, lemon. So that's the difference between quality and condition. Quality defects do not change. Condition defects progress as the product ages. Apples. So here's um, a beautiful photo of um, the different apple varieties received through this program, Fuji, Empire, Red Delicious, Gala, and Granny Smith. Firmness is a factor that helps you determine the overall condition of fruit. So we're in the spring of the year, and there are still apples that are being delivered that were harvested last fall. So as those apples have been in um, controlled atmospheric storage all winter, and they come out, the firmness of the fruit starts to change. So an apple will start out hard, go to firm, firm ripe, and then ripe. Ripe is when the flesh of the fruit starts to become mealy um, before it goes soft. Typically, most um, consumers enjoy their fruit to be firm to firm ripe. So I mentioned that um, the U.S. number one um, grade tolerance is 10% total defects with no more than 2%. What does that mean? Well, here's an example of two different types of packaging that you receive your produce in. So here's a photo of a three-pound film bag of apples and then um, a tray carton of apples. Typically, apples are... Um, delivered in the uh, tray carton with a count marked on the um, outside of the carton. What that means is um, if it's a 113 count, that there will be 113 apples in that carton, 88 count, 88 apples. One of the common defects that you're going to be looking for in fruit that comes in the film bag is because of the apples being so close together, um, stem punctures. Um, why are you concerned about stem punctures? Because any time the skin is broken, it's an opportunity for decay to set in. Um, and again, as the product ages, it progresses. 
So back to my 10% and two. Here's a photo of 10 apples. So go back to the, um, in your mind, the photo of the um, carton of apples, the 113 count. So as I um, pull some trays out of that apple um, carton and I'm looking at 100 pieces of fruit, I can have 10 defective pieces of fruit and the product still meets the US number one grade standard. Of those 10 apples, I cannot have more than two of them with decay. So if I had 10 defective fruit and I had three of those pieces of fruit with decay, it does not meet the US number one standard. So I'm trying to help you get um, a perspective of what US number one um, means. So here's a photo of a decayed apple. And as you'll see, this um, decay has um, progressed. It, it's getting advanced. Um, and this is what happens as the fruit continues to ripen. It will go back. Um, it will just start to decompose. Bruising is a very common defect. Um, and the, what you want to look for um, bruising is you're looking for it to be um, larger than um, a quarter. Um, and if there are more than one area that is bruised, that is um, scorable. Um, you also want to check how deep the bruise is. So pears, um, now I will um, introduce you to the um, Exhibit O from the FNS Handbook 501. This is the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Guide Rate. And according to the guide rate, um, three medium pears um, is the equivalent to one can of fruit. Um, we also understand and see from the orders that a lot of um, the ITOs um, like to order the product in film bags so it's easier um, to distribute. So here's a photo of a three pound film bag of pears and then three medium sized pears. Pears are a year round um, commodity. Um, there are several different varieties, Bartlett, D'Angelo, um, again, bruising is a common defect. This time of year, again, these pears were um, harvested last fall. We're getting close to the time when um, summer pears are going to be coming out for this year. But um, at this time of year, you also want to check to make sure that the, um, there's no internal breakdown in the pear where the um, flesh around the core becomes discolored and extremely soft. Another common defect on pears is um, the brown to black um, surface discoloration on the skin. Pears, um, like apples, um, have um, different firmnesses. So when they're green, they're hard. Then they go from a light green to yellowish green. Um, most, then the fruit would be firm yellowish green to yellow, firm ripe, and then yellow, a good indication that the fruit is ripe. Carrots. Again, um, this, our data shows that this is another commodity that you prefer to receive um, in film bags, either the whole carrots in the one pound film bag or the baby carrots in the one pound bag. Carrots, the whole carrots um, also come in 25, 25 or 50 pound um, film bags. And according to Exhibit O, carrots, um, the distribution is eight medium. Um, for the baby carrots, it's um, one pound. Common defects for carrots include growth cracks, which is a, a quality factor, fresh cracks, which is a condition factor, and you're looking for a crack that's more than a quarter inch deep. 
um, again, because of the time of year, a lot of carrots were planted last fall and are being harvested now. Um, so it's typical that you may find some of the whole carrots start to get woody where the flesh is um, tough and fibrous. Onions, again, um, a commodity that the data supports you like to get in the um, pre-bagged, in the consumer size um, mesh bag. Here's a three pound um, bag of red and yellow onions. And so now I'm going to go to our first polling question. Do you prefer to receive produce such as apples, onions, pears, and potatoes in the consumer size packages or in the loose bulk packages? A, I prefer the consumer size package. It's easier to distribute. B, in loose bulk, um, so participants can take the minimum quantity, or C, a mixture of both consumer packages and loose bulk. So it looks like the, the majority um, prefer A, the um, consumer size packages, which are easier um, to distribute, and then um, a mixture of both. And we appreciate you sharing because that makes make sure that we can um, ensure that you're getting the type of product um, that is most help useful for all of you. So onions. Let's go back to onions. Common defects with onions, as you can see on the photo on the left, is early stages of decay. Typically, you will see decay set in um, because onions will get a black mold between the skin layers, um, and then the mold will start to um, deteriorate and turn into decay. What does decay, what is decay? How can I tell that it's decay? If I um, touched the onion and um, put it between my fingers, if it's decay and I rub it, it will disintegrate. Lemons. So here's a photo of four um, medium lemons, 140 count. So again, in a loose carton, 140, um, when I say 140 count, there would be 140 um, lemons of that medium size in the carton. Um, lemons are available November through May. Typically, lemons come out of California and Arizona. Um, we're going to spend some time on the next couple of slides talking about citrus um, and lemons, oranges, grapefruit. A common defect with citrus is um, skin breakdown. Um, as the skin, um, as the fruit ages and the skin um, dries out, um, it starts to get brown, discolored areas. Again, if that's affecting a large percentage of the surface, that is something a defect that you want, you don't want to see a lot of and does not meet the U.S. number one requirements. Um, another common defect on lemons, Sam, if you would, um, is um, decay. So as, um, if lemons get decay and um, one piece of fruit is decayed and touching another um, contact spot, the decay will spread from that, um, from one piece to the other. So if I opened up a carton of lemons, 140 count, and there was one or two pieces of uh, fruit that had decay, that would still meet the number one, the U.S. number one requirement. If I opened that carton and there were four, six pieces of fruit with decay, that's something that I need to report to the vendor and the DLA rep that doesn't meet the U.S. number one requirement. So oranges. So exhibit O, 
says that three medium oranges, such as in this photo, um, are, meet the requirements. So there are two different types of oranges, navel, which come out of California, and um, Valencia, which come out of Florida. So the navel oranges, um, as in this photo, are 113 count. So again, there would be 113 oranges in a carton. Valencia, they would be 100 count. Oranges are available October through May. You want to make sure that the fruit is fairly uniform in size, um, that it doesn't get bruised. Um, when citrus gets bruised, it goes in and breaks the juice sac. Um, again, like the lemons, um, there isn't skin breakdown, the um, brown to dark brown discolored areas covering a large surface area of the fruit. Um, again, this time of year is the season is coming to an end, that the fruit isn't dry or mushy on the inside, um, and that the, um, there are no skin breaks. And then here's two photos of decay. So the one on the left is more advanced, uh, either a green or um, blue mold rot. And then the um, one on the right is um, an earlier um, stage of um, decay. Again, if I opened the carton and I had these three pieces of fruit in that one carton, it would not meet the US number one requirement. Potatoes, back to um, a commodity that we see you prefer to receive in um, the consumer size packages. So here's um, russet potatoes and red potatoes in five pound film bags. Potatoes, you want to be firm, fairly clean, fairly well shaped, no bruises, cuts, external discoloration. Um, common defect that you may see um, if you go into a grocery store um, that is opened 24 hours, seven days a week, um, if they do not rotate the um, packages of potatoes because they're exposed to the light, potatoes start to turn green. Potatoes like it dark. Potatoes do not like to be refrigerated. Potatoes like to be kept in a cool, dry area. Broccoli. Um, broccoli. <clears throat> One bunch of um, broccoli. This is um, a 14 count, meaning there are 14 bunches of broccoli um, in a carton. Broccoli is available year-round. A large um, most of the broccoli comes out of California, although it changes um, throughout the season. Common defect on um, broccoli is discoloration. Um, the florets start to turn um, yellow as they age. Another area you want to pay attention to is the stem end, where the um, broccoli is cut out in the field, that it isn't discolored, um, and that it hasn't turned to decay. Cabbage. So here's a photo of a carton of cabbage. So um, exhibit O says one um, medium head of cabbage. Cabbage is available year round, typically comes in a 50 pound carton, film bag or mesh bag. Um, you want the cabbage to be firm. You don't want discoloration of the leaves. You don't want it to be soft or puffy. And typically when cabbage is harvested, they leave um, up to four wrapper leaves on the cabbage um, to protect it. Uh, something you want to pay attention to on cabbage is as the leaves become discolored around the edges, that that doesn't turn into um, decay because then that can progress. Cauliflower. <clears throat> Cauliflower, um, 12 count is um, medium size. Again, what you're looking for, um, this photo, beautiful white head of um, cauliflower. Uh, common defect is that it starts to develop dark discolored areas um, or black mold spots, which then again progress into decay. 
Celery, one medium bunch. Common defect on celery is as it ages, the um, leaves become yellow. You also want to check the stem end that that hasn't become discolored and turned into decay. Radishes, another um, product that you seem to prefer in um, consumer packets. So here's a one pound um, film bag. Um, common defect in product that is stored, um, refrigerated like radishes in, as we get into the warmer months is if there's temperature change that the condensation forms on the inside of the bag. Um, and starts to decay the product. Another common defect on radishes as they age is discoloration. Romaine lettuce. So romaine lettuce comes 24 count in a carton, um, available year round. Most of the production comes out of Arizona and California, and we're at that time of year where it's transitioned out of Arizona and moved up into um, California. On the romaine, um, you want to make sure that the leaves are not discolored. They become um, dark brown, um, yellow. Again, like with the cabbage, you want to make sure that the edges of the leaves are not discolored um, because that's um, an area where um, decay will set in. Tomatoes. So most of the products that we've been talking about are those um, products that are available year-round, but um, tomatoes is a seasonal product. Um, so here's a photo of round red tomatoes, medium, and um, grape tomatoes. So the round red tomatoes typically come in the 25-pound um, um, carton. You see the photo of there. And grape and cherry tomatoes come in the 12 one-pint clamshell. Um, you see more and more of the product is packed in the clamshell to protect the product as it is transported. Common defects of tomatoes are sunken, discolored areas, especially around the stem end, um, um, softness. So I would take one of the round red tomatoes and put it in my hand without squeezing it too hard. Um, if there's any give, um, that's an indication that the fruit has become soft. Again, tomatoes um, decay is a very common defect. Um, and there's nothing messier than a carton of tomatoes where you have um, several tomatoes that have decayed because it becomes a soupy mess. Tomatoes are typically available um, May through September. So a common question that we get asked a lot of times is about um, the squash. So this is a seasonal item. We offer both winter and summer squash. So to the left are two varieties of winter squash, um, butternut and acorn. And then to the right are um, summer squash. We have zucchini on the top and then yellow squash um, below. What's the difference between um, summer and winter squash? Well, with the winter squash, um, it typically has a harder skin. You do not eat the skin when you cut. Um, um, when you're preparing to eat the um, winter squash, you scoop out the seeds because you do not eat them. On the summer squash, the skin is um, edible, as are the seeds. Um, it's softer, and then the availability. So the winter squash is available in the fall through the winter months, and it's that time of year where we're starting to see the zucchini and the yellow squash come out, and that will be available um, through the fall. All right, so I went through that 
very quickly, this is our first webinar to, to start to share some best practices on what U.S. number one produce means and what you should be looking for. Now I want to talk again about why it's so important to report complaints. When you receive your produce delivery and you document any shortages or damaged product, we need you to report this not only to the vendor, to the DLA service rep, and to the regional office staff. And why do we ask you to do that? Because sometimes the vendor doesn't share that there have been issues. Most of the vendors are very good and responsive, and if you report there's an issue, they will take care of it. But again, DLA can't take action for those vendors that are not as responsive unless the issues are documented. We ask if after you have worked with and reported it to the vendor, the DLA service rep, and the regional office staff, the problem continues. That's when we ask that you um, contact the USDA Foods Complaint Team, and there's our 800 number, 800-446-6991. <clears throat> we cannot hold the vendor accountable unless we have the issues documented. And like Blair said, photos are very important. Um, uh, very specific um, details. Um, I've ordered um, onions for the last three weeks and they've never been delivered. Those are the types of things um, that we need to know. Um, I don't need to know if the vendor um, showed up at 3 o'clock and um, normally he shows up at 2.30. Um, we have to give the, um, the vendor a little leeway. There's traffic. Um, uh, you know, all kinds of complications, and it's, it's not a precise science. If the vendor doesn't show up, that's a different story, and that needs to be reported. So again, we need your help. Um, as Blair mentioned, we pay DOD, who pays the produce vendors, and the vendors are going to be paid for the product. And if the product doesn't meet the U.S. number one requirements, and you don't let us know that, the vendor is being paid. So help us document and make sure that the vendors meet the contract um, requirements. So let's go to our next polling question, Sam. Do you know who to contact if there are issues with the produce? A, yes, contact the vendor. B, no. C, yes, contact the vendor, but I do not have the vendor contact information. Or D, yes, contact the vendor, the DLA service representative, and the FNS regional office. Sam, they're listening to us this afternoon. Look at that. Everybody agreed, number D, contact the vendor, the DLA service representative, and the FNS regional office. And if you all follow through on that action, we will see great improvements. So thank you. <clears throat> so again, why is reporting complaints so important? We need the complaints documented. If you don't take the time, DLA doesn't know, and when the contract comes up for renewal um, and that vendor decides to bid again, DLA has no grounds to prevent that um, vendor from winning the contract again. DLA does take action um, and does remove vendors from the program if they do not meet the requirements help us improve the program and make sure that your participants are getting the fresh fruits and vegetables that meet the U.S. number one requirement. And then briefly, I wanted to talk about shell eggs. So uh, we have been piloting with some of the ITOs um, where they can get shell, fresh shell eggs 
through the DOD FRESH program. And I wanted to um, make everyone aware that the shell eggs should have a minimum of 14 days shelf life remaining when they are delivered. So if you get eggs um, on today, Thursday, and there's only 12 days left, we want you to um, send us an email, reach out to the vendor, um, contact the DLA service rep, let your regional office know um, so that that can be documented. As a consumer, we just wanted to educate everyone that um, whenever you're um, getting fresh shell eggs, you should open up the carton and make sure that the eggs are clean and the shells are not cracked. Eggs, as a consumer, should be taken home and put in your refrigerator and kept at a temperature of 40 degrees or below. And you want to keep your eggs in the original carton and use them within three weeks for best quality. Now I want to provide some resources um, to help you. So here's our um, website um, with information on the USDA DOD Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program. And then I'm also sharing a link um, if you haven't seen um, the YouTube um, video that we did with our partners at DLA, this is a great video about the DOD FRESH program um, in the FDPIR program. And then you um, have heard me several times throughout this webinar mention um, the FRESH Fruit and Vegetable Guide Rate, Exhibit O from the FNS Handbook 501. Here is um, um, that page and a link to um, the handbook on our website. And then if you do not know who your DL, um, DLA um, service rep is, here is the contact information. So if I was a tribe in um, Minnesota, I would reach out to um, Joe Miller. If I was a tribe in um, Washington, then I would reach out to um, Tessie. So there is contact information for your DLA rep. If you do not have contact information for your vendor, please um, reach out to your DLA um, service rep or um, to Blair or I. And last but not least, I will share um, Blair and my contact information, and then the USDA food complaint mailbox and 800 number. So Sam, that wraps it up for today, and I think I've left some time for questions. And I see there's a question about why are shell eggs at the bottom, um, packed on the bottom of the pallet underneath the produce? Um, that is a food safety requirement. Um, you do not want shell eggs to um, drip onto the produce. That is why um, uh, vendors are required to pack the shell eggs on the bottom so it um, lessens the opportunity for shell eggs um, to let, um, drip if they break onto the um, produce. So I also would advise you that if you're storing sh um, shell eggs in your cooler, make sure you're not putting them on a top shelf um, and produce underneath, because you do not want the shell eggs to drip. That's also a reason why they advise you as a consumer to keep the shell eggs in the carton when you put it in your refrigerator. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, so now, um, like Kathy said, we're gonna have, we have some time to take some questions. So if you could uh, enter any questions you have in the questions box. Um, meanwhile, uh, as a lot of you have already seen, uh, we have some poll questions up. Uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, filling it out, let us know how we did today. Let us know ways we can improve. Uh, we're always looking at for ways to uh, make these webinars more useful to our constituents. Uh, and finally, if you uh, weren't already aware, we have an e-letter. Uh, where we try to provide up-to-date news uh, relative to our programs if you're interested in signing up. Um, 
the link is provided in the notes box. Okay, Sam, I see there's a question about how does um, DLA and USDA hold the vendors accountable for their performance? So as Blair mentioned earlier, um, DLA um, audit readiness crew goes out and does um, audits of the produce vendors, um, produce quality audits. So it's a multiple day audit where they will go into the vendor's facility and they are checking to make sure that they are in compliance with food safety requirements and food defense. Food defense meaning um, uh, measures to prevent intentional contamination. They will also pull 15 um, fruit items and 15 vegetable items to ensure that the product, it, one, is available, two, is all um, from the U.S., and three, they will have a USDA inspector there checking the quality of the product. Based on ha um, how the audit goes, um, the vendor, um, it, that's um, a documented performance of the vendor. Vendors, DLA has removed vendors because they haven't been able to pass the produce quality audit. Vendors have also been removed from the program if there are continuous quality issues or that they are not offering all of the um, produce items um, that should be available or that the produce items are not available um, domestically. So, Blair, can you think of anything else? Uh, Blair, excuse me. So we have one question. If there is one apple damaged in the five pound bag and the rest are in good condition, do we consider this a damaged product? Um, so again, I go back to 10% total defects, no more than two decay. So um, it's, we're not going to base this just on one bad apple in a three pound film bag. There's 12 three pound bags in a master carton. So we're going to open up um, several of the bags and um, check the product um, quality. So no, we would not reject because there was one bad apple in one film bag. Next question. How many eggs will come in per case? For the uh, IPOs that are participating in the Shell Egg Pilot, the eggs come in dozen cartons in either 15 dozen or 30 dozen cartons. Next question, is there a list for produce availability? The produce that's available for the um, food distribution program on Indian reservations is, is available in the FNS handbook, Exhibit O, the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Guide Rate. And um, Blair, I'll rem remind you that there are some produce items that are available year-round, and then there are other items that are just available um, seasonally. Uh, so here's the question, how do we find out which products are in season or out of season? So um, again, in the um, Exhibit O, we'll um, identify which products are available year-round and which are seasonal. And we are also um, in the process of updating um, what the, and standardizing the catalog so that it will identify those seasonal items and when they are available. Some of the seasonal items are not available. Well, that's, um, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. And if season items are not available um, when they, um, 
are in production, um, that is a complaint. And you need to contact your vendor, your DLA service rep, um, and your regional office. Okay, here's a question. Um, due to the e, e. coli advisories, should we continue ordering and receiving romaine lettuce until further notice? So um, let's talk about um, romaine lettuce. Um, about two weeks ago, um, the CDC put out an alert that, um, that began with chopped lettuce, chopped romaine lettuce out of Yuma, Arizona. Um, the following week, the alert changed to all types of um, romaine lettuce out of Yuma, Arizona. It is an alert. It is not a recall. Um, we have been working with DOD and the produce vendors, and all of the romaine lettuce that is offered is coming out of California. So it is okay to order romaine lettuce. Um, here's a question. Do we assume lemons are all medium or that we only get medium lemons? Is there a chart available or is there a weight for lemons? So again, that's the uh, exhibit O. Um, as I mentioned, the 140 count. So as we work with um, DLA and standardize the catalog, that would be something that you wouldn't be um, need to worry about because, yes, you would only receive the medium-sized lemon. Well, here's a question. Um, will there ever be new produce added in the future, such as bananas or pineapples? Uh, so that's an easy question. One of the requirements for this program is that all of the product has to be domestically um, grown and produced. Um, currently, bananas or, nor pineapples are grown domestically, commercially, that they could be distributed around the country. So I, I'm sorry, bananas and pineapples will not be offered um, through this program, nor are they offered through the school lunch program because of the, the um, requirement that they have to be domestic products. Here's a, um, a comment. I have been ordering avocados for a month now, and they are coming from Mexico. If you are receiving product from Mexico, you need to refuse that product, and you need to report that to the vendor, to the service rep, and to your regional office. The requirements for this program are U.S. number one or better domestically produced produce. Um, there's a question, why aren't other melons besides honeydew um, available? When, um, one of the um, criteria in, in selecting the produce that's offered through this program is um, we try to keep it to um, hardier produce items because of um, some of your um, distribution methods when you take it out, um, uh, tailgate. Um, we've been receiving a lot of questions in regards to the Shell Egg Pilot and other ITOs um, participating in the pilot to receive um, the fresh shell eggs as part of their monthly benefit instead of the dried egg mix. Um, we are currently in discussions here at headquarters about expanding the pilot. Um, so just stay tuned for more information as we continue the discussion about expanding the pilot. Question, are mushrooms going to be available? Um, again, um, mushrooms are not one of the more hardy um, produce items. So um, uh, that's the reason why they are not included. Uh, 
Um, here's a question. Will we be able to order avocados? Avocados should be available. It is um, a seasonal item. Here is the question. Um, how about seasonal avocados? Um, will we have another webinar for those items? And yes, we will have another webinar. Um, it's coming up on Blair Help Me May 24th. Um, where we will talk about um, seasonality of produce. Um, we also ask that if you have any other ideas um, or topics that you specifically want us to cover in a webinar, um, we are open to your suggestions. Um, so Elliot, you're looking, um, yes. As I mentioned earlier, we are trying to standardize the catalog so that you would see when those seasonal items um, are available. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We appreciate um, you spending time with us this afternoon, and we hope you found some of our information um, useful. Again, you have our contact information. If you have any questions or suggestions, um, we're happy to hear from you. Sam? All right, and that will wrap it up. Um, I'm going to hang out in the room for a bit, uh, answering questions, um, a few questions, but I'll be cutting off in just a few seconds. Um, thank you very much for your time today, um, and uh, keep an ear out for uh, the recording going up on YouTube in the coming weeks. Thanks.